Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Simon from HomeSite and today I'm going to be addressing installing MQTT with Mosquito as the broker and Zigbee to MQTT using a CC2531. Let's go! So I've had a bunch of questions around Zigbee and MQTT and how it all sort of interoperates. So first of all, people have been asking what it is. People have been asking, how do I install an MQTT broker? And in this case, Mosquito. Now that's a one that's natively supported in Home Assistant, works really well, really simple to install. And how do I install Zigbee to MQTT as well? And how do they interoperate? So today I'm gonna to do this video, I'm gonna do a quick explanation of MQTT. That's very quick. And then I'm gonna install Zigbee to MQTT. I'm gonna install Mosquito Broker all using a CC2531 which is pre-flashed. So hopefully you'll like this video and hopefully you'll subscribe to my channel down below as well. So first of all, I said I'll talk you very, very quickly through MQTT and Zigbee. So let's start with Zigbee. Zigbee is a wireless protocol. It runs on 2.4 gigahertz, the same as one of the Wi-Fi bands, but it, it supports um, secure 128-bit encryption natively. It's this open standard, again, a bit like Wi-Fi, um, but one of the cool things about the Zigbee protocol is it supports that mesh networking. So if you've got a light bulb in one room, that's able to boost the signal to other, other devices in that room, or even further on to other devices which are able to boost that signal again, and they can find a path back to that gateway. So Zigbee is a really cool protocol. It's been really widely adopted for, for home automation. Less so for sort of IIoT, as in industrial Ethernet of things. So moving on to MQTT, MQTT stands for Message Queuing Telemetry Transport. It's a really lightweight protocol. Um, it able, is able to pass information with, in very small amounts of bandwidth, but securely as well. And it's got this concept for publish and subscribe, and you must have a broker in it to, to handle those messages. Now typically, a device will publish its state um, or, and others can subscribe onto that to understand that state. So if you think about a light bulb, a light bulb is going to publish its state back to the broker and the broker is going to send that to all the people that are interested in that. So that might be your home assistant. So home assistant, if you think about decoupling that from your, your mosquito broker and your home assistant, you've got to sort of think about them in two slightly different terms, even though they might be running on the same box. But the broker is able to send that information to your home assistant and then that's able to then update your the information that's displayed on your screens. Now, interestingly as well, it's the same for a publish can be a control as well. So it doesn't just have to be a status, it could be a control. So the home assistant might send a publish to the MQTT broker, in our case Mosquito, and that will send it on to, again, it will push it on to other people, i.e. the light bulb itself, who are interested in doing that thing, i.e. who are turning on. Now you could have, now that could turn on a bunch of lights. So it could be a, a, to a single topic, that's sending to the to multiple lights. So we can really go into MQTT, and if you if you really want that, I could go into a lot of detail. So let me know in the comments and I'll do a do a better video on it. But for now, all we're really interested in is Zigbee to MQTT, getting that working, because that will do the translation from Zigbee through to MQTT, and that will pass it into Mosquito, and that will allow it all to work with Home Assistant as well. So let's get it all installed. So we're starting off in our Home Assistant Supervisor. We're going to go to our add-on store. And first of all, we're going, to, we're going to look for Zigbee. Now you can see that Zigbee to MQTT, which is going to be the first thing we install, isn't there. We need to add the repository. So if we click on the three little dots at the top right, we can paste in this text here. Once we hit add, it will then have somewhere else to go off and look for, for software. So now that that's added, you can see it's down here. Alternatively, you can just search for Zigbee again and you'll see that that now comes up. So once we click on the one we want, we can hit install. Now this takes about five minutes, so I fast forwarded through this bit. Now once we've got to here, you can see it's installed successfully. Now I want to show it in my sidebar because it's quite an important part of my home assistant. So we can tick that option and we can try and start it. Now spoiler alert, this is going to fail to start with. Now, we, there's a few more things that we need to do to get Zigbee to MQTT working first. So we can look into the documentation here, and this will tell us about the, the debug modes and all sorts of things like that. 
If we look in our configuration, we can see the most one of the most important parts at this point is this port, this serial port, this dev forward slash TTY ACM0. Now that is the device that you're using to interpret the Zigbee protocol. Now there's a couple of ways of finding that device. You can click on the three little dots and click hardware and scroll through this massive long list. Now I'm sure when I first started using Home Assistant, it wasn't as long as this and it was quite simple. And this was the way that I used to, to find that device name. But here, I mean, unless you knew the name of the device, it's like a needle in a haystack. So if we come out of here, now I'd started off with my device plugged in already. Now I've unplugged it and plugged it back in again. So if I scroll down to the bottom, you can see the device that's been unplugged and plugged back in. So you can see this is here, this dev, forward slash TTY, ACM0, that's the name of the device. So I'm gonna select that part and copy it. Now, I don't know how this Zigbee term QTT config knew that already. It might be because I've already had it installed once, um, but it might be because it's looked and, and understood and, and found that device. Now, if we look in our log, we can see we've still got some red text, which is never good, never a good sign in the log. We can see that the MQTT service hasn't found a broker. So that's what we're going to install next, and that's Mosquito. So we can simply search for Mosquito, click on that, hit install. Again, spoiler alert, takes about four minutes, I think, on my installation. So once we've installed that, we can start it up. Now in this one, the config is a lot simpler, unless you wanted to, to put on um, anonymous configuration so that you could send information to it anonymously, um, or use a SSL, use, use it through a secure um, method, then you can pretty much just start it up as it is. So there you go, that's started. No option to show it in the sidebar because it sits in the background and just interprets those messages coming through. So the other thing you're going to need to do is set up a user. A specific user for MQTT is advised. Now you could use your normal user, but you, you probably don't want this user to be admin, an administrator. So I'm just setting up for now MQTT underscore user and the password is MQTT underscore pass. Like normal, you'd have to enter that password in twice and create. Once we've got that done, I'm gonna try Zigbee to MQTT and you can see that that's failed, but it will take us straight through to that configuration. And we can now take a look in our log again. So. We should have, we've got a broker now, so we can start this up and see what happens. If we come back to our log and refresh a couple of times. So it's looking better, we've got more green, less red, it's always a good start. But we're not quite there yet. We've still got some red, some error whilst starting. Now we're getting a failure to connect. Hmm, okay. So that user that we've just created, I'm also going to put that into the configuration of this Zigbee to MQTT and hopefully that'll get it started. So into our configuration and in this part here where we've got MQTT colon, I'm simply going to add some additional lines which I've already prepared, but it's just user colon, the name and then password colon and then password. So I'm going to hit save to that and restart the add-on. Now, if I come back to my log now, hopefully we should see all green, no red. That's what, we, that's, that's what we're looking for. It looks pretty good. So hopefully now we can come to our Zigbee to MQTT interface. Now I could, could have clicked on this little Z in the bottom on the, on the sidebar here. Here we go, fantastic. So I'm gonna permit joining on this button up here in the top, and I'm gonna put some of my devices into pairing mode. Now again, I've shortcut this a little bit. So I've, uh, I started off with the bulb, and now I'm adding in this IKEA multi remote. Now sometimes when you're adding these devices, they don't always come through. Um, you might have to refresh, have a couple of goes at it. And we can see that this IKEA remote, we can see battery life, if I click a button, you can see that it's sort of flashing up really quick. It's because it clears it back down again after. 
that's just this particular remote but looks good we can uh, we can certainly talk to it if I click on the bowl we can change the color we can do all sorts of things now this is obviously dependent on the device that you've got and the, and the type of things that it supports now these names aren't particularly user friendly so let's just change those I'm just going to call this bulb for now but you'd probably want to put what room it's in or the, the device the lamp whatever Now, if we click in settings, we can see it's got this home assistant support switch. Now, you're probably going to want to have that turned on. If we go to the integrations and go to MQTT, and the three little dots at the bottom right and system options, we can automatically have devices that it sees learnt and added into the system. Now, it depends how much of a control freak you are. You might want to add them directly in through configuration.yaml and get that extra little bit of control. But for ease, you might just want to have them as soon as they appear in Home Assistant for them to be added automatically. Now, I didn't have that setting ticked, so it wouldn't have added my multi-remote. So I've just removed it, and I'll add it back in again now, and we'll just follow that process through and make sure that it adds it in. So I've just re-added my multi-remote. You can see these green boxes down here that flashed up and it starts what they call the interview process where they're learning about each other. The device is telling it what it supports and giving Zigbee to MQTT a chance to set it up and make sure that it's got everything set up just right. So I'm gonna change the name of this to multi-remote. Uh, you can also load this map and it should show you how things are connected together. Now one of the great things about Zigbee is that you don't have to have everything talking back to the central hub, it can talk through other devices. See here this bulb acts as a router as well, so it, the multi-remote is actually talking to the bulb and the bulb is passing onto my home assistant which is represented by the star. Now if we look in our logs and I click a button on the remote and scroll down a little bit, you can see this is the Zigbee MQTT publishing that MQTT message. So you can see that's the topic we spoke about and the payload, so that's toggle, we've got brightness up click as well. Now we could pass that directly into an MQTT in node, in node red if we wanted to. So if we look through our integrations, you can see at the minute there's no entities. We've got two disabled entities by default. I'm not quite sure why it does it like this. You have to enable them manually. So if we click on the entities, we can see we've got all of these marked as unavailable. So we select all of the entities we want, and we can click Enable Selected up here in the top right-hand corner. Once we've clicked Enable, now this is asking me to restart. Now, I didn't really question it at the time, and I just went to Configuration, checked my config and did a restart. However, I'm not sure that's strictly needed. Um, I've not seen it before. However, I do normally configure my devices directly to configuration.yaml anyway. So now that that's restarted, we can click on our entities and we can see that they've come up. Now hopefully we've got some control. Fantastic, I can change the color of my bulb directly through here. And if I look at my multi-remote, I should be able to view the status and I can see it's really quickly flashing up with the, uh, with the buttons that I've pressed. And you can see all the other types as well, like the battery, so that should tell me the percentage. There we go, we've got a new battery in there. Now you can see this entity ID is not particularly helpful. Um, this lights.0x00, that seemed like a computer name rather than a friendly name. So we can change that. So if we come back here, we can call this, we can call it whatever we want. However, I've made the little mistake here of calling RGB bulb, when really it has to be prefixed with that domain, that light dot or that switch dot, that sensor dot. So whatever it starts with currently, leave that alone and just change everything after the dot. Now, I don't know why it doesn't like that, so I'm just gonna retype it all, light dot bulb, I'm gonna put, and update. So that's now updated that into our Home Assistant. And hopefully I've still got control. If I click back through, uh, I can change it back to blue. Cool. Obviously you can't see that working, but it is. Great. 
There is another way of doing it as well through the integrations. You can choose the entities through here and you can see that I can rename the action, for example, on this multi remote. I can rename the battery so it will make sense so that I can uh, really use it in my system. So the final thing I'm going to say is about this CC2531 made by IT. Now they're dirt cheap. Um, they really, really are cheap. You can buy them pre-flashed for about £15. Um, you can buy them with the aerial um, built in or with a separate aerial um, which, which I use. Now I do genuinely use this for my home network and I don't really have any issues. Um, I see some people having issues with and, and moving to a combi two stick and decoms, um, which to be honest, I've never had the call to work for, uh, never had the call to, to work towards using, um, because this little thing's been so reliable, and I've only got maybe 30 Zigbee devices. Um, so maybe once you get to a critical mass, you do need to move to something like the combi two stick. But I'll put a little link to this down in the description below. Um, I'll put all of my stuff down in the description as well, including my configurations and repository links and all that sort of thing. I really hope that you've liked this video. I hope that you found it useful. If you do have any comments, any uh, criticisms even, um, leave them in the comment section below um, and I'll be sure to come back to you. If you've got any questions or need a hand with anything, again, just let me know. Uh, please subscribe to my channel to make sure you don't miss out any more and uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you very much.